Hello and thank you for joining us again for another episode of Kidnapped Hearts, the weekly TV show brought to you by the International Criminal Court against child kidnapping. We are committed to bringing you the ugly truth about the corrupted family court systems and heinous crimes against children, which the government continues to turn a blind eye to. In one of our previous episodes, Dark Secrets, Why Children Are Being Deliberately Drugged in Foster Care, we touched on medical kidnapping and how the American government abuses this to make profits. If you've not already seen that episode, then we strongly recommend that you do. Medical kidnapping is happening more and more all around the world. It is where children are being taken away from their parents by governments using unjustified medical excuses or for the sake of forcing treatments, vaccines or tests onto the child. Today we'd like to follow in a similar vein and this is an episode that you need to pay attention to, especially if you're British or have connections to the United Kingdom. We'll be talking about medical kidnapping in the British system and exposing you to some hard facts. But before we go any further, as a disclaimer, we must stress that this episode is not about breaking the law or doing anything illegal. And even though not all officials are crooked, that does not mean that you should let your guard down. Nor are we lambasting the foster parents who open their homes to these children, as a lot of them are good people. Furthermore, whatever we say here should also not be viewed as legal advice. If in doubt, it's always recommended to speak to your lawyer. And if you do need legal help, you are welcome to contact our office where we can give you further advice. Great Britain. It's a country that's associated with so many things. History, music, art, architecture, the world's most famous royal family and tea. Yes, there are so many images and ideas that are conjured with the UK, yet one of the lesser known things about Great Britain is the medical kidnapping that happens on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, I understand how that may sound unbelievable. After all, one of the things Britain is also known for is having a free healthcare system. Being British means that the NHS, which is the National Health Service in the UK, will fund most things that can come under the banner of health for their citizens. This even extends to people being able to have psychotherapy, physiotherapy, plastic surgery, IVF, gender reassignment surgery, you name it. It's likely that the NHS may cover most of it at no cost to the recipient. The general idea is that the money gained from the taxes that the government takes from the citizen is reinvested in the public sector and areas where people need support more. It sounds like an ideal system, right? So I know what you're thinking right now. You're thinking that if all of this is true, how could medical kidnapping even be a thing in the UK? After all, it's not like in the United States where companies such as Medicare make a huge amount of profits based on each potential child customer in the foster system that they can sign up. If you've seen our previous episode, Dark Secrets, why children are being deliberately drugged in foster care, we revealed how American children in care receive government insurance from Medicare, which, not surprisingly, includes mental health services. You may remember that a report from the Government Accounting Office, GAO, discovered that children were being drugged in the American foster care with psychotropic drugs at rates of up to nearly five times higher than non-foster children. And in comparison with children who are not in the care system, the chances were much higher for foster children to be given five or more psychiatric drugs at the same time. And that foster children were nine times more likely to be given drugs that had no FDA recommended dose for their age, and those under the age of one were twice as likely to be prescribed a psychiatric drug. In the UK each year, more and more children are being put into foster system. The Fostering Network reported that over 65,000 children live with almost 55,000 foster families across the UK each day. This is nearly 80% of the 83,000 children in care away from home on any one day in the UK. Around 30,000 more children come into care over the course of 12 months, with similar numbers leaving the care system to return home, move in with another family member, live with new adoptive families, become subject to a special guardianship or residence order, or move on to adult life. The United Kingdom is made up of England, Northern Ireland, Scotland and Wales. The report further stated that in England, 53,420 children were living with foster families on 31st of March 2017. 
This is 78% of the 68,300 children in care looked after away from home. There are around 43,710 foster families in England. For Northern Ireland, 2,212 children were living with foster families on 31st March 2016. This is 88% of the 2,500 children in care looked after away from home. There are approximately 2,095 foster families in Northern Ireland. For Scotland, 5,252 children were living with foster families on 31st December 2017. This is 75% of 6,993 children in care looked after away from home and family. There are approximately 4,000 foster families in Scotland. For Wales, 4,264 children were living with foster families on 31st March 2016. This is 85% of the 5,037 children in care looked after away from home. There are approximately 3,700 foster families in Wales. Yet out of these cases, many children are being taken away from loving homes and families who have done nothing wrong. And yes, even though it's completely immoral, it is also completely legal for the government to do that. And once they make that decision to take a child away, oftentimes there is simply no turning back or other alternatives for the parents who then face a difficult task of fighting a system that will never work in their favour. One such young couple, Leonardo Edwards and Irlanda Menino, found this out the hard way after their planned home birth did not go quite as they expected. Claire Calvi of The Richie Allen Show wrote about the case in the Health Nut News saying, What should have been a straightforward home birth went downhill quickly when their midwife showed up just 10 minutes before the birth and was allegedly more concerned about getting a parking ticket than assisting the delivery. Irlanda lost two litres of blood after a botched attempt to deliver the placenta, or afterbirth, after Santiago was delivered and was rushed to hospital by paramedics. In the hospital, Irlanda went straight into theatre, as they call it there, and delivered the placenta. Baby Santiago wasn't even a patient as the hospital didn't deliver him. His father was just holding him and waiting to see his wife would be alright. At this point, it became clear the hospital was behaving in a hostile manner towards the couple, repeatedly asking for a name for the as yet unnamed baby and generally behaving in an unkind and unprofessional way towards them. It's hard to know at this point if the couple's baby had already been targeted for adoption, but certainly at best there was a cultural and personality clash occurring. Irlanda was eventually discharged and they returned home with their baby to begin a new life as a family of three. Their happiness was short-lived. The following day, a midwife arrived to their door, demanding to be allowed in to see the baby. Irlanda, exhausted from having not yet slept, turned her away, telling her to come back with an appointment. This may have been her first big mistake. It is implicitly understood by women in the UK that it is a midwife's God-given right to be allowed access to your home and baby following birth, and only the bravest would turn her away. Being Portuguese, Irlanda was not aware of this and so wasn't intimidated. Shortly afterwards, a policeman arrived at the door demanding to see the baby. When Irlanda once again refused, he asked her to simply hold the baby up to the window for him to see. This she did and satisfied, he went away. A couple of days later, they were instructed to return to hospital with their baby to have him checked. Wary after the previous incidents, the couple had already taken the precaution of having an independent midwife assess the baby and declare him to be in perfect health. However, the hospital disagreed and claimed the baby was suffering a serious case of jaundice and hurriedly removed him from his parents for his own safety, placing him in foster care. The United Kingdom has an interesting policy whereby children can be removed even if there has been no abuse or harm to the child, simply because the social worker thinks there may have been a risk of future emotional harm. <laughs> yes, you heard me right. And in case you didn't quite grasp that fully, let me explain it to you in another way. To put that in simpler terms, a child can be removed from a loving and nurturing family because of an act that is essentially never or may never even happen. And as shocking as that may sound to you and me, that's simply the law. And once someone gets caught up by these legal technicalities, there is often no way out. This horrendous policy was implemented in a case back in 2013. 
Italian-born Alessandra Pacieri was ordered to have her baby by cesarean section and after, her baby was taken away from her because it was discovered that Alessandra had bipolar disorder. And to make her story even more unbelievable, she was not even a British citizen. She had flown to the UK to attend a training seminar. Whilst there, she experienced a panic attack and as such, the police were called. When they arrived, she explained that she had stopped taking medicine for her anxiety when she found out she was pregnant as she was fearful it may harm her unborn child. However, things took a nasty turn very quickly as explained by Carl Morton in The Telegraph. The label on the medicine contains a warning that it can cause death to pregnant women or an unborn baby, she said last week after the story of what happened to her became headline news around the world. It was first revealed in the Sunday Telegraph, provoking widespread outrage that a woman should be forced to have a caesarean section against her will and then have the baby taken away by social services. She didn't even live in this country. The 33-year-old from Tuscany flew to Britain in the summer of 2012 to take part in a training course in how to be an airline cabin attendant, and she stayed in a hotel near Stansted Airport. But eight days into the course, it all got too much for her. She had what she described as a panic attack and rang the police. Officers came to her hotel room and she gave them the number of her mother back home in Italy, who explained about the medicine. Ms. Pacieri says she was tricked into going to hospital with the police, who said they wanted to check the baby's health. The mother was also examined at the Princess Alexandra Hospital in Harlow, Essex, and told she would be sectioned under the Mental Health Act. I was freaking out. I had the feeling right away that they want to take my baby, she said. I begged the doctors to let me go back to my country. I said I wanted to go to court to get it all sorted out. As the due date loomed, she was transferred to the mother and baby unit at Broomfield Hospital in Chelmsford. She wanted a natural birth, but the doctors insisted it would be safer to deliver the baby by caesarean. They had trouble persuading her of this. Then, on August 23rd, within a few days of her due date, the Mid-Essex NHS Trust applied to the courts for a declaration and order that a C-section was in her best interest and could be forced upon her using reasonable restraint. The order was given, authorising the use of reasonable restraint. The next day, the operation took place. Ms. Pacieri has said that five nurses held her down and injected a sedative into her right thigh. I was pushed down onto a bed and a mask was put over my face. I felt as though I was suffocating. It was the last thing that I remember. In 2014, it was revealed that by the order of a British court, the child was adopted by good and loving people. And even though Alessandra remains hopeful to be able to see her daughter again, the reality is that it may never happen. Or if it did, it may not be until her child is an adult. And Alessandra is just one of these numerous horror stories that we've heard about happening across the UK. Furthermore, parents who have tried to fight back against this system have even been jailed for contempt of court if it was perceived that their protests were breaking any gagging orders that the family court put on them. The reality is that even though there is a free healthcare system in the UK, a lot of this behaviour is driven by financial gain. Each year, the government spends billions of pounds on social services, adoption agencies and foster carers. A foster carer could potentially earn up to £2,000 a week, while adoption agencies can earn in excess of £20,000 for each child who is adopted by a new family. In an article for The Telegraph, Christopher Booker revealed more about this. The National Fostering Agency, NFA, founded by two social workers, was sold in 2012 for £130 million to a private investment firm owned by an array of bankers and accountants, which also owned a chain of steak restaurants and the Groucho Club. In 2015, the NFA was sold on again to another private equity firm. The price was not disclosed, but the first private equity firm announced that it had more than doubled its original investment, suggesting that the NFA had been sold for more than £250 million. Income from foster care was shown in the NFA's 2014 accounts as £94 million, with the owners receiving £14.4 million and the highest paid director £318,112. The problem is that this is something that continues to plague not just the United Kingdom, but countries all over the world. Families are being torn apart by a legal system that should be upholding and protecting the rights of family. I encourage you to share this video with your friends and family. 
This is something that can affect parents and children everywhere. And we need to join in standing up against these injustices and to raise awareness. That's all we have time for today on our show. Thanks for joining us again for another episode of Kidnap Tarts. Tell us what you think on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash childabductioncourt.org or on our Twitter page at childabductionc. You can also drop us a line at our website, childabductioncourt.eu or in the comments section below this video. Be sure to tune in next week for another hard-hitting episode with nothing but the facts.